The Gehenna Parks and Recreation Foundation is a nonprofit organization of volunteers who are committed to raising additional funds to support the Gehenna community and the Parks and Rec Department. The money raised by the foundation is used to support many community events each year beyond the city's financial resources. The foundation supports the Gehenna community and its residents through many different areas, like giving summer camp scholarships to Gehenna children, assisting in offering additional recreation opportunities with the Creekside Live concert series, and giving over $20,000 to community art projects, including the historical mural on Mill Street and five unique art installations in the Creekside District. The Creekside Live Concert Series is a community recreation program that the Foundation has helped to provide the past couple years in partnerships with assistance from local businesses and the Parks and Recreation Department. Well, we see a lot of people that come in here from out of town, from different communities all over. to come and enjoy the beautiful scenery we have down here, the live entertainment, just to get out and, and enjoy the nice weather. I mean, even though this year's weather wasn't the best, uh, we still had a lot of people come down for all the concerts, and, and they really enjoyed coming to town, and we, we like them coming and, and seeing our town. Among the many art projects in the Creekside District, you can find several art pieces produced by Steve Bush, an area resident. Most of all, they made it available. When Creekside was uh, created, they made um, artwork a part of the process and the dream of what Creekside would be. And so there was a thought about it from the beginning concept of this to begin with. Then more and more people were excited about that and excited about the details, the beauty, the, the final result. And uh, there was monies left over to be able to do so. So um, first off, uh, um, they outreached to the community to say, look at art. Number two, they give an opportunity to artists to um, submit things and to uh, make it happen, you know, actually from design to actual 3D sculpture, which will be here for generations. Another art project provided through the foundation is the historical mural on the side of Signature's Mill Street Tavern. Yeah, it's not just a wonderful piece of art that's in the community, but each one of those images, some are from the mid-1800s, some are mid-1900s, are important icons or landmarks or people. And as they walk by, it's a great conversation starter. And the, the, the locals and those of us that live around here love it. It always strikes up a conversation and it makes sure that even as we're in the middle of this street with great development, new buildings, new businesses, we do remember the old ones and the ones that were here a long time ago and not so long ago. The Gehanna Parks and Recreation Foundation, since its beginning in 2008, has provided over 200 campers scholarships to the Parks and Recreation Department's summer camp programs. So camps are important for kids of themselves because they gain a ton of skill sets while they're at camp um, from the socialization of making friends, they deal with conflict resolution, leadership skills, and just what happens when they try a new skill and it gives them a safe environment to fail. For lack of better words, not that we want them to fail, but you know, if they don't catch a fish on their first try, they're surrounded by people who can support them in that experience. As far as the community, it gives kids a place to go instead of during the summertime where there's kind of like hanging out doing nothing it gets them outside it gets them active we bring in different community involvement so they get to know the things available in their community we utilize other parks in the community we utilize the pool so it just kind of brings us all together and gives kids opens their eyes to what the community has to offer The Gehanna Parks and Recreation Foundation is a crucial part of our community because it helps support several projects just like this historical art mural behind me. For WGLH-TV, this has been Michael Cromer. Mr. Matt McGregor is both an English teacher at Gehanna Lincoln High School and a pilot in the United States Army. Early this year, Mr. McGregor was deployed first to Kuwait and then to Iraq on a mission to fly helicopters in an effort to defeat ISIS. While in Iraq, Mr. McGregor works a rigorous schedule and only has one day off every two weeks. Then we, we go in and usually make sure that nothing's changed for your mission, get the aircraft ready to go, go out, make sure 
Uh, there's nothing wrong with the aircraft. Nothing's changed since the night before because those things always break. Yeah. Then uh, um, come back in once the aircraft's ready. Get rebriefed. Head out to the aircraft, and we only fly during the dark because of the uh, threat here. So okay. there's a lot of people that shoot at you, but at <sighs> night you can't see. If you you can't really see what you can't hit, you know, yeah. unless it's luck. So we fly at night with no lights on. Yeah. Um, different altitudes. And that keeps us uh, relatively safe. So you fly your mission for a few hours, come back, land, uh, debrief, make sure, tell them anything that's happened, and then you go back and we usually, like I just got back, we just were playing basketball. And there's a couple gyms on base, so we'll go work out or play basketball, and then go back and go to bed and then do it all again the next day. While Mr. McGregor understands that serving in the United States Army is a duty that is necessary to protect the freedoms in the United States, he does miss his life back home. You know, it's hard, especially like, um, it's hard to go from a job you love to a job that's just like, eh. And that's kind of how <laughs> flying in the Army has become to me. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a good job, and it's important what we're doing here because we're keeping people off the roads that would otherwise be attacked by either ISIS or an IED, a, a, a roadside bomb. Um, so we're keeping – our mission here is very, very important. Um, but it's it's hard to be away, to, you know, and it, it, so it's important. I don't mean to take away from it, but it's not something that I really yeah. enjoy a lot. In a place where temperatures reach 130 degrees and enemies lurk around every corner, all of us here at Gehanna hope that Mr. McGregor can make a safe return at the end of this year. For WGLH-TV, this has been Michael Cromer. The boys' soccer team has a very talented team this year with several players coming from the Crew Junior Soccer Academy. They hope to have a very successful season. In the program's third year under Coach Kovach, the team looks to have the most success it has had in several years. Well, first and foremost, we got to win the OCC, and then everything that comes after that is just an extra bonus. The team trains every single day to work towards their goal. Uh, definitely hard work in practice. I know after our our game on on Saturday against Dublin Jerome, we were weren't quite as pleased with how that game went. And yesterday we had one of the most intense trainings that we've had all season. I'd say so. I think we're definitely we all have the right attitude. We all want to work to get where we want to go, and I think that's where it's going to come from. Playing two to three games a week can be hard, but the team is up for the challenge. The boys' soccer team won the state championship in 2009, but since then they have yet to reach a regional final. They hope that this year can be their year. So far, in the first few weeks of the season, the team is currently 5-2, and two, making both of their losses against the two Dublin schools, who are top five in the state. The boys' soccer team has been the OCC champion for the last several years. Uh, our biggest team goal is definitely winning the OCC championship, competing in our league, and I think we have a 11-year uh, record of holding the ACC, the uh, the OCC title. So hopefully we can win that again this year and keep that going. Boys soccer team hopes to go from just OCC champions to state champions this season. For WGLH TV, this has been Michael Cromer. In 1968, Joel Silver introduced his idea of ultimate frisbee to the Columbia High School Student Council in Maplewood, New Jersey. The next year, the first game was played between two groups of students. In 1969, a team had been formed at the high school, and they played in a parking lot. The only lines that existed were the goal lines, usually marked by the telephone poles, or piles of the players' coats. The first and second set of rules were written in 1970 by Joel Silver. Buzzy Hellring, and John Hines. I got to talk to Paul Greff, one of Ultimate Frisbee's greatest players. Uh, well, it's a, I guess it's a long uh, history. I started probably 1979, way back before many of these uh, kids were born, and uh, started at Kalamazoo College, played all through the 80s up in Michigan, and then I moved to uh, Boston in the 90s, and I played with uh, Death or Glory, and we won uh, quite a few championships out there. 
Um, I retired at the ripe age of 42 in 2003 and uh, came back and played Masters and won Worlds and Nationals with Dog again reun reunited. So, so I had a pretty good run out in Boston. And uh, after I stopped playing there, I coached uh, the women's team in Boston, Brute Squad, who was still around and still a, you know, a perennial favorite in the women's game. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And then I took a position here in Columbus, moved here in 2009, and immediately started coaching um, Ohio State. Um, and it's been six years now that I've been coaching these guys, and it's been a lot of fun. The first college ultimate game was played between Rutgers and Princeton on November 6, 1972. Rutgers won the game 29-27. to The first organized tournament, the National Collegiate Championships, was played on April 25th in 1975. Eight teams took part in a tournament in Yale. Currently, almost every single college in the United States, both Division I and Division III, have a club Ultimate Frisbee team. The college Ultimate Frisbee programs compete in tournaments year-long and then go to nationals, if they're lucky enough, at the end of the season. Just last year, Ultimate Frisbee was recognized by the International Olympic Committee as an official sport. They hope to be in the Olympics by 2020. One of the top five players in the world, Dylan Freechild, talks about his game and the future of Ultimate Frisbee. As a, on a personal note, I suppose it was just super fun hanging out on a bus. With, you know, whether you like the person or not, you had to get to know them and had to get to be able to like, just put up with whatever it was and also just create great times. And, uh, and playing against the best club teams in the world once every other day makes you a way better Ultimate player. So. It's it's pretty sweet gig that we get to do. Even though many don't know about Ultimate Frisbee, it has a rich history and it's going to continue to grow. For WGLH TV, this has been Michael Cromer. Wait, not to rush. Movie. I like to play baseball. We like Watch to play baseball. golf. <laughs> I like to do theater. We like to play on the iPad. Mm. I like to play soccer. <laughs> I like to go bowling. I like going to the mall with my friends and swimming. I like to play tennis. I like to hang out with my friends and go to concerts. I love to walk. I like to write and direct movies. I like to go to school. I like to bowl. I like to play softball. We like working at the main cup. I like to shop. I like to run. We like a basketball. Hey, how's it going? Hi. A program here at the school that has not only gained respect around Central Ohio, but also throughout the state, is our theater department. Just this year, they won Best Performances in Central Ohio. Jason Graff, Jessica Jones, and Grace English take us behind the curtain to look at this special program. One project that the students and staff of Gehenna have been working on is the One Room Schoolhouse. Now that the One Room Schoolhouse is finished, it is used as a museum for third grade students to see what it was like to go to school in the 1800s. Colton Bosa and Mylon Jackson take us on a tour of the building. With a push to add new classes, the science department has added a few new ones for students to take this year, and they have already received a national recognition. Rachel Shannon and Mackenzie Swetland show us what some of these classes are like. Not only do many of our academic programs have traditions of success, but so do our athletics. Colin Strait and Ian Blaney show us what some of these successes and traditions are. The future of the Gehenna School District is extremely bright. I am impressed with all of the programs, opportunities, and projects that the students at Gehenna are a part of. We would like to thank you for joining our one hour show. It would be impossible to show all the great programs Gehanna has in just one hour. I have lived in this community for my whole life and I know the impact that it has had on me and will continue to have on me as I graduate this year. We would like to thank you for tuning in to our special program. Until then, this has been Michael Cromer, Jason Graff, and Grace English saying, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. Have, have a great, great week! week.